All right, folks, back to work, back to work. Let's make some money this first week of December. Hope everyone had a fantastic, restful Thanksgiving last week. Now, speaking of the holiday last week, boy, we've seen a really big move going higher ever since Thanksgiving last Thursday. It seems like markets are going up and up and up right now. Now, you know everyone's waiting to buy a pullback, right? But pullbacks, come on. They sound so easy. Just, just buy the dip, right? They sound easy. But we all know by now that picking the right pullback, the perfect profitable pullback, is a lot more difficult than it sounds at first. Now, the good news is, anytime I see a big move like this, there are two techniques I use, two strategies I use to pick a profitable pullback the following day. We're gonna cover both of those. They're both very easy, by the way. I will admit though, the second one is my favorite. We'll talk about that tonight, of course, in the video. We'll cover entries, exits. I'll give you guys an easy roadmap to make some money on Tuesday morning as well. So charts ready to go. Enough of the intro. Let's go make some money on Tuesday morning and kick off this month of December. S&P and SPY, already go in front of me here. NASDAQ, triple Qs are already. I have three very simple but very important clues on the charts in front of us right now that are telling us where I think the winning trades are waiting for us here tomorrow. One of those big clues is right here on these hourly charts. It's very easy to see we are bullish overall on the S&P and SPY, very bullish overall here on the NASDAQ and the triple Qs. I'd like to use these hourly chart timeframes as an overall directional filter. We can easily see the buyers have all the control momentum on the higher time frame. That's one of three very important clues for tomorrow. Buyers have control of long-term momentum. But I will admit, this is not the most important clue. I have two more important clues on some tick charts because in all reality, it's good to know overall direction, but the one thing these hourly charts don't do, they won't help us time the best entries for tomorrow. We'll talk about those two additional clues here in a moment. Before we do that though, let's have schedule for tomorrow. There's two things on my mind for tomorrow. First things first is the jolts report at 10 o'clock Eastern time. You always wanna pay attention when you got news at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And also be aware too, we have a bunch of Fed speakers tomorrow late morning, early afternoon. Remember, the markets are trying to figure out right now if the Fed will cut rates again in December. We heard from Charles Waller this afternoon and he didn't sound very convinced that it was, a, it was a certainty of a rate cut coming in December. So that's definitely something we're watching and tuning in right now to see if those Fed speakers are going to change the opinion of the market regarding the potential rate cuts coming on December 18th. So two things in my mind for tomorrow. We definitely know that Jolts report will be a market mover tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock Eastern time. And I'll be listening in those Fed speakers tomorrow afternoon. Will they give us some clues ahead of Jay Powell's speech on Wednesday afternoon? Let's get back to our charts though. It's good to know when the news is and things we're watching here. But as you know by now, hopefully by now by now, the money is made on the charts. I mentioned earlier, there are three important clues that are tipping us off to where the best winners are tomorrow. One of those big clues is this bullish market overall on the hourly chart. But you know what though? We're not gonna trade off an hourly chart. I trade off tick charts in our trade room. Tick charts, by the way, all the time frames you'll need or in the upper left-hand corner. Tick charts make entry timing easier because they make pattern recognition a lot easier. And by the way, too, if you're watching for the first time right now, that is the 21 EMA. It is pretty much the only indicator we need to find lots of winning trades each week. There are two more important clues on these tick charts right now. One big clue is multiple trading ranges. Range right there over the holiday, new range up here. Now, why is that an important clue? Well, because ranges act like magnets. The most recent range is the magnet. The previous range now sets up for a breakout pullback. If you watch my YouTube videos on this channel, you know how much we love breakout pullbacks. It's one of the most common, consistent things about technical analysis. So breakout pullback zone is 
certainly one thing I'm watching to pick the perfect pullback for tomorrow. The second big clue we have on the chart is look at how big this move is, right? The Nasdaq's even bigger right now. Thanksgiving was right there. We've made a pretty big move going higher without really any decent pullback. We have to assume that whenever we see a big move going higher like this, I don't want to buy high up here. I want to buy nice and low. To do that, I want to buy a two-legged pullback. So let's put together all three of those clues. We're bullish overall on the hourly time frame. That's our directional bias. We have two ranges. The most recent range is the magnet. The previous range is right for a breakout pullback. And the third clue here is the size of this move. I don't want to buy high. I want to buy low. And to do that, I'm going to use a two-legged pullback. Knowing this, I have four trades I'm watching for tomorrow. I mentioned earlier, there are two types of techniques I like to use after a big move going higher like this. We'll cover the first technique here on the S&P. But again, as I said earlier, I will admit my favorite of these is the second one we'll talk about a bit later here on the NASDAQ. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. The first one now is, is definitely going to be a two-legged pullback. Now, when I say two-legged pullback, think about a measured move. My favorite two-legged pullbacks or a measured move that goes a bit too far, somewhere down around that breakout pullback area. Now, you know me, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not gonna blindly buy into that area because it may go all the way down into the low of that channel. So I'm not gonna pick a bottom on this. What I'll do though is, is as we start pulling back going lower, this will feel like a reversal. And I would love to see if I can trap in some rookie sellers chasing this thing lower. This is a horrible spot to be a seller. Because of that, it's a great spot for a bear trap. Now think about bears trying once, think about bears trying twice. If I can get those bears trying twice here, then I've got their stops sitting right here and I could buy right into those stop losses. So one of four trades I'm watching for tomorrow is a two-legged pullback. And again, don't pick the bottom on this. I don't know how far that pullback will go. What I do know though is if those bears commit, I can trap them in and use a failure pattern to, to squeeze those stops and run back to those highs. Now, the market wants to go back up and take out that high. If you wanna make more money, Go in and add to your winners. My favorite way to add to my winners is always with a trap pattern. This would be a bear trap pattern. Now, there's three components to a bear trap combination here. The first one is I want to see some separation off that moving average. As it goes higher, it's going to separate away from that 21 EMA. That pullback will barely miss that 21 EMA. That's first step. Second step, higher high in price. Third step, get right below that low, a strong green candle, closing above that 21 EMA. That is our bear trap add-on. Trade number one of four trades for tomorrow, two-legged pullback, a failure into a trap combination. Now, second trade for tomorrow. We may not get that two try failure. We see a lot of times where on these breakout pullbacks where they'll run lower and they'll bounce hard off of that low. I may not get the chance to trap in the bears below that low. If I don't get the entry down here, if it V bottoms off that low, remember, anytime we see a V bottom, we almost almost always see a grinding move going higher. That grinding move going higher makes this very easy. Draw a trend line off the highs, bring it down to that low. That makes my channel. Now, repeat after me. Look left. First test is the best test. My favorite entry on a V bottom, in case I don't get that failure pattern is to find that new channel, mark off that low, and I want to get in. Ideally, I want to get in just below that prior swing. It oftentimes will also be too, it'll be a failure pattern below that 21 EMA, failures 
into pullback combinations. If you guys have gone through my free video course, you know what I'm talking about. Trap pattern, failure pattern, pullback pattern. Again, the market wants to go back up and retest that high. V bottom, find that new channel. Don't miss that first test is the best test. One more trade here, a third trade of four I have for tomorrow is we may not get that deep two-legged pullback. Oftentimes what happens is, is all we get is a sharp but shallow pullback. This range up here is acting like a magnet. I want to buy nice and low after a big move like this. If I don't get a chance to buy nice and low, if all I get is a shallow pullback, I'm going to have to buy as low as I can. And to do that, I'm going to look for what I call a two-try trap. It's bears once, it's bears twice. Now, one small difference here is I want to see a higher high in price. I want to get right below that low. If all I see is a shallow pullback, I'm going to anticipate these bears are going to try to finish off that second leg going lower once they try once and try twice. I want to get in underneath that swing low, that bear trap signal, green candle closing firmly above the 21 EMA, Emerin Long for a target back up to retest that high. Those are three out of four trades for tomorrow. Now, I have one more trade I want to talk about. Before we do that, though, let's slow down for a moment because I know most of you folks watching right now, you know these patterns. You're making money with failures, traps, two-legged pullbacks. But if you're here for the first time right now, this might be a brand new language, a brand new strategy. But don't you worry. I teach this entire roadmap, the entire strategy. I have a ton of examples of traps and failures, two-legged pullbacks, breakout pullbacks. Guys, I teach all of this in a lot more detail in our free video classes. I'll put a link up top here for you, upper right-hand corner. Grab that link that popped up there and take that free trading course because the strategy I teach in that short video series will teach you a simple trick we use in our members trade room that tells us exactly where the winning trades are going to be each day. More importantly though, I want to teach you my four favorite entry patterns so you can time better entries, make a lot more money. Guys, the markets are way too good right now not to be making consistent profits. So if you're tired of missing the best entries each day, or if you've lost your confidence in your current trading strategy, again, hit that link that popped up there. Take that free trading course. Everyone loves all the trade examples I include in that short video series. The best part is it's 100% free. And also too, guys, I'm gonna put all the important links you'll need, in the description of this YouTube video. Start first with the free video classes, learn the roadmap. Everyone loves the free video series. Also too, keep in mind too, we trade together every morning in our trade room. The place to be is every morning, eight o'clock Eastern time. I'll put trade room membership links down there for you in the video description. And don't forget, we post a lot of updates, charts, uh, videos, mindset stuff on Twitter or X, as they call it these days. If you're on Twitter X, give me a follow. Again, all the details you'll need to learn more and hopefully earn a lot more are linked in the description of this YouTube video. So that's where you want to go to learn more about the strategy I'm talking about here tonight. Now, where did we leave off? We talked about that two-legged pullback with a bear trap down there. We talked about how sometimes that V bottom off of that low, that first test is the best test. And if all we get is a sharp pullback, but no two-legged pullback, it needs to be as, we, we wanna buy as low as we possibly can with that bear trap, that two-try trap, trap those bears in, squeeze those stops, running back up to retest that high. Now, one more variation of this, then we'll go to the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ will talk about that second strategy we use after we see a big move higher that we've seen the past couple days here. I mentioned earlier that I want to get that two-legged pullback down into that breakout pullback zone. We'll trap the bears in, let them try once, let them try twice. We see a lot of these types of bear traps uh, in our trade room. We take our first profit target, that one-to-one, -one, stop moves up to point of entry. But you know what happens sometimes? Sometimes we don't make it all the way back up and take out that high. That's the goal, of course, right now is to go back up and retest the high. Sometimes though, this two-legged pullback is so strong 
that sometimes we hold the underbelly of one of these moves and make another leg going lower. Sometimes this becomes the two-legged pullback. Oftentimes, when Marcus have made these big, big moves going higher like this, just a simple pullback, not enough. We'll get the pop up, take our profit targets, but then the bears come in and run this thing back down to retest the low. Remember, the goal right now is, is to buy as low as we can. So if we make another leg lower, bottom line, if we retest that low, at this point now, this is another bite at the apple. This is not a full-blown reversal. Remember that? Remember that hourly chart? We're way high up right now on the hourly chart. So I am I definitely do not want to fall for this as a as a reversal. This is a great place for another one of those bear traps. Because think about it this way: anybody who sells right here, they're taking their profit where? Down here. Sellers up here become buyers down here. This is a horrible place to be selling. So let's do it again. Trap those bears in. I always like to use a two try failure pattern, like I teach in the free video course. One try, two try, much better than trying to blindly pick that bottom or use indicators like MACD, divergence, stochastics. Those are not consistent enough, at least now that I've seen over almost 20 years of doing this. Once those bears get in though, now we know where their stops are. And that's important because once we trap in those bears, those stops trigger buy orders. If you're caught short and you get stopped out, you're buying your way out. This is why failure patterns work so well in our trade room. Remember, as we go higher, if you want to make more money, add to your winners here. Get that separation away from the moving average, that higher high in price, and go right below that low for that, in this case, that bear trap add-on. Take some profit off at the high here, and of course, the big targets are up overhead here. That is one final variation of that two-legged pullback. The two-legged pullback is one of two strategies I look for anytime I see a big move that we've seen after the holiday late last week. Let's now talk about that second core technique, that second core strategy I mentioned earlier on the NASDAQ. Before we dive into the NASDAQ though, if you're enjoying this video right now, please help me grow this channel by hitting that like button, subscribing, and sharing this video link with other trading buddies because YouTube, believe it or not, rewards me every time time you like and subscribe to these YouTube videos. I know we're all busy people these days and I appreciate you guys spending a few minutes with me here every evening on these videos. So thank you so much for the likes, subscribes and all the ongoing support. Now let's dive in and talk about the NASDAQ. Obviously a bull market right now, but look at how big that move is ever since the holiday last week. Let's drill down to our tick charts right now. The tick charts really illustrate how big this move is right now. Two important clues here on the NASDAQ tick charts here. First one, of course, is the size of that move. Anytime I see a big move like this, I don't want to buy high. I want to buy nice and low. When I think about buying nice and low, I think about a two legged pullback. That's definitely something we talked earlier about on the S&P. The second big clue here is, is that trading range. That trading range now has rotated off of that low. And what do we know about ranges? Whenever they break out like this, they love to break out and pull back. So I mentioned earlier on the S&P, we mentioned before that I love the idea of a two-legged pullback. I mentioned a couple variations of that, the V bottom, the double bottom, right? So all the variations we talked about on the S&P chart, the shallow pullback with that two try trap. So again, all the same stuff we mentioned earlier on the S&P can easily be applied now to NASDAQ as well. But I wanna talk about that second technique I mentioned earlier. If we go sideways into a new trading range, Oftentimes, after a big move like this, the market has to kind of catch its breath a little bit and go sideways into a trading range. Now, I don't know exactly where that range will be right now, but let's say, for example, we have a range developing here overnight into tomorrow morning. The most important thing you need to learn about ranges is they're magnets and they love to rotate, which means the amount below, the amount above, they rotate back and forth, back and forth. What I do is I use what we call pendulum swings. Remember, ranges are balanced markets, so the amount below the range 
can now project back above the range. The amount above the range can project now below the range. I use things like expanding triangles or megaphones to time the entries, buying low and selling high. So if we do wind up in a range at some point tomorrow morning, we now know I want to find levels of support below the range. For example, right, I'll look left, I'll find some support levels down below that range, I'm gonna wait for, we'll wait for a breakout. And as always, I'm not going to pick the bottom on that because I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how far that pullback will go. It might be go, it might, it might go a bit further than I think it will right now. What I do know though is, with that range above us as a magnet, overall bull market, this is a horrible spot to be a seller. I'm gonna wait for those bears to try once, try twice, trap those bears in, use that failure pattern. And again, you wanna make more money, add to your winners, go in and add now with your bear trap combination. We see a lot of these failure into trap combinations in our trade room. Now, this is why I said earlier, this second technique is more, it's, it well, it's, it's by far my favorite because ranges love to rotate, right? So now the amount below the range can now project now above that range. That's going to give us now our big final target. These can be very, very lucrative because now we'll take profit off at the high of day. More importantly, we're going to leave that runner all the way up, right, to that pendulum swing on the opposite side. So think about that same breakout, that same two try failure into that bear trap combo, but think about now how ranges love to rotate. Now, where things really get fun is if you go higher first. Let's say for example here now, we have a trading range developed overnight, and now let's say we go higher here first now. Now, this is not a great place to be buying, right? We're buying into all-time highs. We've already made a pretty big move here the last couple of days here. If it really punches, if it really punches hard, we can look for a breakout pullback. We'll cross that bridge once we get there tomorrow morning. That would be a pretty remarkable move after, you know, back-to-back -back big days higher the last couple of trading days. So we'll talk about a breakout pullback tomorrow morning in our trade room. But in most cases though, after a big move up, if we go sideways in a range here now, this will wind up kicking back off of that high and we'll get a fake out breakout. These fake out breakouts will be very, very exciting because now the amount above the range can now project down below the range. I will tell you from experience, if we fake out breakout off the high, this is going to feel very bearish as it pulls back. This will feel like a full-blown reversal, but we know better. We know it's not a reversal. It's simply a range rotation. This is where the fun happens, right? Now, we take the amount above, we project that down below, we know where that key area of now of support is, and again, could be could be really, really anywhere in that area now. Once we, once we now take out that, we call a pendulum swing going lower now, now trap those bears in again, grab those one, two, higher high in price, trail, or, or sorry, uh, squeeze those stops, right? Trap in those bears, your failure into that trap combination we mentioned earlier. And again, we know where the market wants to go in these situations. It wants to go back, take out that high up there, right? And of course, measure the amount below, the amount above, and that will give you the runner going higher here. The same variations apply down here as well, right? The same variations will always apply. So for example, if I see, for example, a run going lower, we do oftentimes get a two try and then back up again, but for some reason we may not. We may there may be maybe so many buyers down here, it just simply whoop and runs right back up into that trading range. If that happens, don't forget that V bottom game plan I mentioned earlier here in this video. Mark off that high, mark off that low, look left, find some prior swings. Don't miss that first test is the best test off of that channel low. That V bottom variation works very well. We also love to see too, right? If we get that one to going higher, who knows? We might get that one to one first target, but again, being so high up right now, it may roll over, take out that low, keep an eye out for one 
two legs down, right? Think about that measured move going lower here. And again, anybody who sells short right there, they're buying their way out of this position at that low. Sellers up here become buyers down here. A horrible spot. Remember, double bottoms in an overall bull market are a gift to the buyers, right? The key is don't pick that bottom on this one. Wait for the pullback. Trap those bears in once, twice. As you can see, I love to trap sellers on the wrong side of these bull markets. I think that's one of the easiest ways to make money consistently. That failure into that bear trap combination. Again, you'll learn a lot more about these inside that free video course. All right, guys, so big move going higher. Will we see a range up here? We'll trade the range play we're talking about here. We'll, we'll trade that tomorrow, or will we get that two legged pullback? Only time will tell, but that is the plan for tomorrow morning. Now, speaking of tomorrow morning, the place to be is in my trade room, eight o'clock Eastern time. Guys, the easiest way to start making money in these markets is to learn and trade along every morning at the opening bell. I'm gonna put all the important links you'll need to learn more about membership, take our free video classes, uh, follow me on Twitter or X. Again, all the important links you'll need in the description of this YouTube video. Start first with the free video course. Everyone loves all the trade examples. Then come join me in my trade room and we'll do it all together every morning at the opening bell. In the meantime, guys, be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And you better be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye for now.